Hi everyone, my name is Chris Panny with The Body Wish, your gateway to holistic nutrition. Welcome to my series, Well Elementary, where I connect with experts in fitness, nutrition, and mindset. My guest today is Bill Daniels from Walnut Creek, California. Bill is a seasoned personal trainer who specializes in helping individuals with physical limitations so they can break free from their constraints and embark on a transformative fitness journey. He has expertise in assisting clients with conditions such as unexplained pain, post-surgery recovery, injury rehabilitation, and vertigo. Bill is dedicated to guiding them towards weight loss and increased strength. Utilizing functional neurology techniques, Bill facilitates rapid progress and empowers clients to achieve their fitness goals efficiently. Since 2001, Bill has been committed to improving the lives of individuals through personalized training programs that are tailored to address their specific needs and challenges. Please welcome Bill Daniels. Congratulations on all of your accomplishments. I'm very grateful you were able to set some time aside to join me in a discussion about fitness and well-being. How are you doing? I'm great. How are you doing today? Doing good, keeping busy, and staying out of trouble. There you go. <laughs> so if I may ask, uh, what inspired you to delve into the world of fitness, and at what age did this happen? You know, I grew up playing sports, um, all kinds of sports, and uh, uh, all through high school, in college, uh, I was playing football and, you know, had a good relationship with my strength coaches in college and learned a lot there. Um, wasn't really sure when I got out of college if that's what I wanted to do. Um, but when I went back home to live with my parents for a year after college, uh, I ended up back at my old high school with, uh, you know, my, my old high school uh, football team and working with those guys in the weight room and really kind of fell in love with it. And then uh, about a year and a half after that, I moved to California from Massachusetts and was trying to figure out what I was going to do with my life and was working out at the local YMCA one day and got talking to the fitness manager there. And he's like, what are you doing? He's like, why don't you, why don't you come work for us? And that's when I really started my, my deep dive into health and fitness and just fell in love with it. Nice. Wow. That's a great story. Um, so you said you're from Massachusetts. Yes. Ah, I spent five years there um, before moving out to California. Uh, I came out here in 95. So, uh, yeah, I was in Boston for five years. Nice. So, yeah, nice town to visit, but I sure don't miss the winters. We, Amen. Yeah, you know, I <laughs> yeah, got the first, time I, the first time I came to California, I actually had a girlfriend in college who's now my wife. Nice. And I, her birthday's in January. And so it was winter break in college. And I, flew out here to come say hi to her, come surprise her for her birthday. And I was like, wow, this is way better. <laughs> you got the surprise. Yeah, right. No, I couldn't get over it when I came out here. You know, I was so, you know, I grew up on the East Coast. I'm from upstate New York originally. And so, yeah, I know what those winters are like. And God, the worst that happened out here is it rained. I was like, bring it on. They don't even oh, call I know. out here. They call it the rainy season. I said, wow, cool. Yeah, yeah I found my place where I'm going to live. No kidding. So, um, Bill, I looked up some information on your website, beyondfitnessonline.com, and I read that you overcame some medical setbacks. Do you mind sharing your story about what happened and how did you overcome it? Yeah, I was, like I said, I grew up playing sports. And when I moved to California, um, I was, you know, trying to meet people and, and do different things that I enjoyed. And one of those things was I, I got into playing some adult league softball. Um, and I was on a pretty competitive um, tournament team. And we were practicing one weekend. Um, and I just remember uh, just shagging ball in the outfield. And I'm thinking, man, my back feels a little bit tight. And I was, a, I was literally about to get on the ground and start stretching it. And sure enough, somebody hit a ball out my way. And just competitive me was like, I'm not letting that ball hit the ground. And I turned to run for it. And I stepped in a little ditch. And I felt a sharp pain right away. I crumbled to the ground. I had trouble getting up off the ground uh, without help, and I called it a day right then, and I went home and ended up getting into my apartment and uh, tried to pick up my glove my glove up off the floor 
uh, a couple hours after I'd been home and ended up falling onto the floor because it was just too painful to bend over. And I couldn't get up off the ground. And I ended up spending the night on the floor in my dining room. Uh, the next morning, I was able to kind of struggle and get out of get up off the floor and went to the doctor. And I started that whole journey with doctors and chiropractors and acupuncturists and you name it. I, I tried it. Um, and it would help a little, but then it would always come back. And I was in pretty rough shape. And I was only in my mid 20s. And I was like, this this can't be this can't be the way things have to be. And that's when I really started uh, diving into like, how does pain really work? Um, and I, I was just on my mind all the time. I was always thinking about it. I'm like, how does the body work? There's got to be more to this. And uh, I was in the shower one day thinking about it. Well, I had the hot water running on me. And my thought was, ultimately, if you break it all down, we are all skeletons that are trying to move. And those skeletons move when the muscles contract. and when muscles contract, they don't do that on their own. They do it when they get a signal from the nerve. And that nerve sends that signal from the brain. And I'm like, ah, the brain is it. Like the brain has got to be the motherboard of the whole body. So then I started thinking, I wonder if there are ways to, you know, manipulate the brain to try and reduce pain. And thankfully, we have the internet these days. And I did lots and lots of research. And I ended up coming across a few different organizations and and uh, people that worked on this kind of stuff. Um, one of those organizations is a certification company called Z Health, which I've been through their entire curriculum now. And it's a brain-based, uh, it's, it's a brain-first approach to movement. So if you move certain ways, you have certain habitual movements, you can tell what parts of the brain aren't working properly. That can impact how you move. That can impact the pain you're feeling. It can impact... Uh, your flexibility or lack thereof. And so learning how to do different things, sometimes we got to do exercises with our eyes or, you know, moving our head in a certain way in order to get those brain areas active. And it's amazing how it can eliminate the pain and make you feel so much better pretty quickly. Wow. That is, that's inspirational because, you know, so many people get kind of stuck in a rut. They're, they're dealing with some kind of health challenge. And the same thing, you go to the doctor, you go to the Cairo, you try, you know, this modality, that modality, and you strike out. Um, yeah. And, you know, people, you know, we're not uh, medical professionals. So we just get to a point where we're just like, well, I guess this is the card I'm dealt with. And, you know, this is, you know, got to make the best of it. Um, I had uh, something similar. I wasn't in physical pain like you were dealing with. I actually had uh, chronic fatigue for 25 yeah. years. Okay. I was, you know, when I read your story on the website, I said, that sounds like me going to one healthcare practitioner after another, throwing, you know, a bucket of cash here and a bucket of cash there yeah. and, you know, striking out at every turn, got tons of blood work done. And yeah, it was a long, a long hill to climb. Uh, yeah. You know, I, I just, somebody told me actually out where you live, uh, he's uh, into martial arts and a massage therapist told me this like seven or eight years ago he goes you keep at it he said you're going to find a solution for it and in, inside I was like god I hope so because uh, you know I'm kind of like feeling demoralized at this point so anyway kudos to you for uh you know not quitting you know I I have a uh, an affirmation I like to say uh a winner never quits and a quitter never wins yeah I love that yeah so uh yeah, I got into saying affirmations uh, about two years ago, and they make a difference, I have to say. You know, yeah, that's great. Aligned, thinking more positively instead of getting stuck in the doom and gloom of the, the world we live in. Yeah, I think that's huge for any any hill you're trying to climb. You've got you've to keep that strong mental attitude and whatever it takes to get you there. I think that's fantastic. That's something that I really have come to admire about athletes is – you know, I know athletes don't want to get out of bed in the morning and go run or go to the gym. It feels good in bed. It's warm. It's cozy. But it's that discipline. You know, it's like, yeah, you you, you stay focused and and uh, and, you know, it's that mindset, you know, and I sure I admire that. Yeah, so, I love seeing some of the stuff that like, you know, Kobe Bryant used to do with himself. Like, I, I remember seeing a video of him once talking about when he was coming back from his torn Achilles. He was saying he signed a contract for with himself that he was going to get up every day and he was going to go do the work and make it back. And I thought that was pretty cool. 
Yeah. Yeah. That's about, you know, keeping yourself uh, on course and not getting uh, distracted with life. Yeah. So I uh, wanted to ask you a question about uh, your clients. Um, can you describe some of the challenges that they were dealing with uh, right before they reached out to you? Oh, yeah. It's it's all over the map. I get I get uh, a lot of weird requests sometimes. Um, I've had on multiple occasions, different people come up to me and tell me, I hear you're the guy to see when nobody else, when nothing else works. And I was like, that's kind of a cool reputation to have. Um, but I think it's, it's a similar to what I've gone through where, you know, they have different issues, whether it's, you know, I see a lot of people with vertigo because it's pretty common and they'll go, you know, I've been to the ENT, I've been to the chiropractor, nobody seems to really know what's going on and they're just having me take medication or do this weird thing and nothing's helping. And I'm able to take a different perspective on what they're going through. One, because I've been through a lot of this stuff personally. And then two, my education is just different. So uh, sometimes I'm able to figure out some different things that really make sometimes even instant results. So um, I think that's why I get a lot of the people I do because we're, we've had similar paths. Interesting. Yeah, vertigo is, uh, yeah, it's kind of mysterious. Um, I don't know what doctors other than what they do other than throw medication at it, which is what they're trained to do. Um, yeah. Well, what I've learned is there's vertigo is really an umbrella term for a lot of different things. And even sometimes these doctors will sit there and they don't know what the issue is. And it might not actually be vertigo technically, but it's somewhat similar. And they'll just throw that label on it because they like to label things. And yeah. it's not always, you know, the most accurate thing. Um, I was reading, too, that you also work with people who are looking to lose weight. Um, what are some of the methods that they tried prior to working with you? Oh, everything. Uh, you know, it's the typical, I'm going to just get on the treadmill and I'm going to eat less. And that's not always the right approach. It is for some people. Um, but I think it's important to really kind of get down into the science of where have these people been? What is their body telling them? Um, you know, figuring out what kind of things might help that they haven't tried yet and really getting them to understand what it is that their body is, is really doing at that moment. Wow. You know, I've been uh, following diets. Um, I've been on Zoom calls uh, with uh, some people uh, in my business um, some some experts and uh, the, you know diets have been one of those things that have always been uh, controversial. Sure. And a lot of people don't realize people automatically assume the diet is you know I'm going to lose my belly fat, but what they don't realize is they're also burning off their lean muscle. Yeah, and I learned about a, a study. It was actually a meta analysis that was published in the uh, American Medical Journal. It's one of the many medical journals uh, out there. They did this extensive study and they looked at all of these popular um, diets that have been around, you know, Atkins, Keto, uh, Weight Watchers, uh, the Zone Diet, the Blood Type Diet. And they did this study. It was almost 7,300 participants. It ran for a year. And there was very little difference in how much people, uh, how much weight people lost. Uh, I think it was, it was minuscule, like maybe a couple of ounces. The sure. average weight loss over the course of a year was 16 pounds, which is really nothing to get too excited about. But yeah. every single one of them, people were losing lean muscle. And this is, you know, this slows down the metabolism. If you get too overboard with it, it weakens your immune system. See, and people don't know this. Yeah. And every yeah, that's the problem with that yo-yo dieting. Sorry? That's the problem with the yo-yo dieting and trying all these different things. Yeah. Right? That's that's the term I use because they yeah. on the diet. It's like a band aid. Yeah, it's, it's a temporary fix. But then when they get off the diet, guess what? They put the weight back on again. They go yeah. back to their eating habits, and yeah, it's like a vicious cycle. I think it's important to you know make sure you're also including things like how much are you drinking? You know, in terms of water, that's important. It's important to manage your stress and and deal with that appropriately. It's important to make sure you're sleeping enough. Like there's so many other factors other than just what you're eating 
And it's really important, you know, to kind of factor in all those things. Yeah, well said. Yeah, these are points. That's great that you said this because, yeah, people don't even take this into consideration. They just yeah. need to eat less calorie restriction. Yeah. You know, they get out their apps. Um, you know, I can only have uh, this today. It's like, can I turn on the hair dryer or can I turn on the toaster? You're so, right. Right. It's not a natural way to eat. Yeah. You know, that's why people fall off the wagon. It's like, I don't want to sit there with a calculator, to, you know, telling me what I can eat today. It's not natural. So people, right. they, they lose interest. They lose their momentum. Yeah. And I, and I think that's part of it, too. Like, I, I absolutely hate the word diet because it, it just, to me, sounds like I'm doing this temporary thing. And if you really want to have that healthy lifestyle, you've got to live the healthy lifestyle. It's, you know, it's it's sometimes I've had hard conversations with people where it's like, you know, you might need to consider cutting this friend out of your life or you might need to stop doing this. I even had a conversation with a client once about changing their job because just the environment in their job with the eating and they just couldn't break free from it. It's there's there's a lot to it. And, and it really does require sometimes just an overhaul of how you're living. Yeah, it's a lifestyle change. Yeah. That's what, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm in the same boat. I am, I did a um, a video myself uh, for my, ch uh, my YouTube channel not too long ago talking about the downsides of diets and how long-term they don't work. You know, you're burning off lean muscle as well. Yeah, it's it's just like you said, it's a temporary, it's a Band-Aid. That's the way yeah. I Yeah. I mean, even when I'm talking to my clients about it, I never use the word diet. I always, I, my question is always, how has your nutrition been? You know, mm. I just, I just hate the word diet. I think it's, I think it's setting you up for failure when you start using that word. Yeah. Couldn't agree more. Hey, I want to uh, speak, since we're talking uh, nutrition, I wanted to get your insights on, uh, you know, plant-based diets have gained popularity. Um, sure. I saw some great, uh, I saw an excellent documentary about six months ago called The Game Changers on Netflix. In fact, I watched it twice. What okay. are your thoughts on plant-based diets versus meat? Well, I'll tell you my, my philosophy on nutrition and exercise, for that matter, is that everybody's an individual and, and every person's body needs something a little different. So I think for some people, plant-based might be fantastic. And for other people, they might need you know, higher doses of, of meat in their diet. Um, so I, I really do think it becomes a very individualized thing based on your own body chemistry. Um, did you see that documentary? The, the game? I've seen it advertised and it's on my to watch list in, in my Netflix account, but I haven't actually seen it yet. Okay. Yeah. I'd be curious to get your uh, insight when you had a chance to, uh, to watch it. Um, yeah. One of the guys interviewed in there is uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yeah, I heard about this. Okay. Yeah, and he goes on to say that, you know, when he was younger and he was competing, you know, it was meat, 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 and he was uh but interestingly his cholesterol was through the roof. Sure. Got on a vegan diet. He says he feels better than ever. He says he still has that explosive energy. But interestingly, I connected with uh another guy on LinkedIn. Uh he does a lot of posting, and this was right after I saw the documentary. And I said, what are your thoughts about what uh, Arnold had to say about meat versus plant-based? He wrote me back right away. And he says, Arnold never would have gotten as big as he did if he was on a plant-based diet. Yeah. And that very well could be true. So hard to say from, from the other side of the screen, you know? Yeah, true. Um, well, Arnold did a lot of things back in the day that were all around driving up his testosterone. So... I mean, that, that's an interesting documentary in itself, the one about him and uh, who was it that he worked out with? Lou Ferrigno. Oh, they, yeah. You know, they were ahead of their time with trying to drive testosterone, aside from the steroids, you know. Right. Um, let's talk supplementation for a moment. Uh, there seems to be two opinions on this topic. Some people feel like eating traditional foods is, is a must. Uh, that's the best course to take. Other people feel supplementation is necessary uh, because the nutrients are no longer abundant in our foods. Um, do you have any uh, mm -hmm. insights on this? Yeah, I mean, I think the name in itself, supplement, really uh, just nails it because, you know, it, it's not supposed to be the staple of the diet. It's supposed to fill in the gaps. Right. So um, 
I mean, you basically said it where the, the food source, where your food comes from is going to dictate how much nutri- how many nutrients are in that food that your body can use. Um, and if you aren't getting high quality food, you're going to need vitamins and you're going to need different supplements. Um, I do use uh, protein powders once in a while, but not as a regular thing. It's, it's when like personally I'll have a, like a protein smoothie when I don't have time to make a meal, but I've got to eat something. Right. And I try to keep those times far and few between because you don't want to get into that on a regular basis. Cause I do think real food is better than anything else, but the supplements really can be u- a useful tool to, uh, fill in the holes. Hmm. Yeah, well said. Um, so as a last question, I want to ask you, what do you do for fun on your when you got some downtime? Yeah. Uh, I love to play with my kids. I've got a um, an 11, almost 12-year-old daughter, and my son just turned nine, and they're big into sports. I love sports, so, um, you know, I love watching them play. Sometimes we'll watch, you know, all, all those Boston teams <laughs> um, together. I've got them, even though we're living in California have them watching the Celtics and the Bruins and the Red Sox and all those. Um, I like to work out just, you know, that's why I do what I do. It's just always been a passion of mine. I I enjoy it. Um, Spending time with my wife, you know, doing the things she likes to do. And, you know, occasionally we travel, but not a lot. Those are, those are the things that probably fill up my spare time. Nice. Well, great. Um, I want to thank you again for joining me today. This was absolutely amazing to get your insights on fitness, nutrition, and mindset. You've got some stellar credentials, and you are a wealth of information. Um, You know, your information, your knowledge is adding quality to people's lives, so I'm totally on board with that. Uh, I want to thank everyone else for watching this, and please subscribe to my channel. Check out the description below on how to access Bill's website, beyondfitnessonline.com. I encourage you to give him a call for a consultation, and please enjoy the rest of your day, and we'll see you soon. Eat well, be well. Thank you.